Are you married or in a committed relationship looking for real advice on having love and enriching your relationship? You are in the right place. Welcome to The Couples Expert with Stuart Fensterheim. Hi there, it's Stuart Fensterheim, The Couples Expert, and we are here in Scottsdale, and this is The Couples Expert podcast, and what's more fun than talking about love? The topic of love and the fact that I am a couples counselor in the realm of love and relationships just really excites me every single day because I get to see couples go from the brink of disaster where they're totally disconnected to really coming together. And something really wonderful happened to me a couple of days ago is I received a phone call from a couple who I hadn't seen in quite a while. And the issue that brought them in to see me had to do with the guy's inability, at least from his girlfriend's standpoint, to commit to a relationship. They both had strong, powerful feelings for each other. They were together for a period of time. And he couldn't get himself to really make the commitment to the relationship and basically ask her to marry him. And they had been going back and forth on this for quite some time. So they came in to see me. And at the point that we stopped seeing each other, I was not really sure where their relationship was going to go. Because we talked about attachments. We talked about vulnerability. We talked about authenticity. And everything that happened in the counseling and for the two of them was pretty exciting because they were definitely feeling closer to each other. They were able to talk about things differently than they ever had. They would do a really good job of going to, as I've sort of jokingly called it before, going to attachment land. So one of the things that I tell people when they come to see me or come to my two days and seven conversation weekends is that even couples that stop in the middle of the process, tend to report that even years later, their relationship is closer. That just the knowledge of being able to know, how do you have these dialogues? How do you talk about what your needs are? That alone will do it. And this couple is a great example of that. They really did stop in the middle of this process. And I think there was a reason. I think, you know, he lives out of state. He lives in another part of the country. And their relationship was one that they both were really busy, hectic people, and they went away. It was sort of sad for me. So let me get back to this. So I get this phone call from the guy who turns and says to me, we wanted to reach out to you because we wanted to just thank you. We are now engaged and going to get married. And what they've asked of me is to marry them. Because they know that I am designated as a minister of the Universal Life Church. And they asked me because they wanted their marriage to be really acknowledged by someone that knew them the way they were, and also know where they are right now. And I was just so incredibly touched. Things like this don't happen a lot for us couples counselors. I have to be truthful about this. And to have someone reach back, and that's what's so exciting. It doesn't happen a lot. But sometimes people, when they go away, they don't let you know how things go, and you sort of think about them. And this is one couple that I've recently actually had some thoughts about. And they called to tell me how much they appreciated the work that I did with them. And they would like me to marry them. So in May, I'm going to do that. Why that's relevant for this podcast is because love is interesting. Love is love, and it really doesn't matter. As long as you really put one foot in front of the other and keep 
that commitment alive of working toward having that close connected relationship, you will get there. This couple got there. There were other couples with similar presentations that didn't get there. And the difference between this couple and them is this couple absolutely didn't give up. They kept plodding away. What I would like to talk about today, though, is a little different than this. That was some exciting news for me. I want to talk about the whole concept that love happens to us sometimes when we least expect it. And sometimes the situation's a little different than some. So today's podcast is about age disparity in a relationship. This episode is sponsored by Stewart's Daily Notes. Stewart's Daily Notes is an email newsletter from the couples expert that will improve your marriage in five minutes a day. Small things can have a big impact on your relationship over time. Sign up for Stuart's Daily Notes. It's a resource of tools, videos, exercises, and more. All done by the couple's expert, Stuart Fensterheim, with 30 years of clinical experience working with couples. Delivered straight to your inbox. The best part about it, it's free. Sign up today. Go to www.thecouplesexperts.com and change your relationship every single day of your life together. Now back to the episode. When we think about what we used to classically call a May-December romance was one person quite older than the other. And what we all know is love doesn't always happen when we want it to. Sometimes a throws comes at us when we least expect it. And love sometimes just happens. We love whom we love. I've talked about this before in different podcasts that I've done, that we can't control who we fall in love with. We may have an expectation that the person that we fall in love with is going to be a certain type. I think so many of us, when we're little, what we do is we start sort of planning our future and we say, oh, I want 2.5 kids. I want to live in a ranch-style house. I want to make a lot of money. All of these things. And most of us would say, okay, when I get married, I want to marry a woman. I want to marry someone who is you know, gregarious or outgoing, because that's who I am. I want someone who likes to talk about things. And usually, for a man, traditionally, what we'll say is, well, I want someone, you know, about five years younger than I am. I don't think most of us would say, I want to fall in love with someone 10, 15, 20, 30 years older we have an image of who we will fall in love with, what their type's going to be, what their build is going to be, what their attributes going to be. But when we meet someone that's so outside of that expectation, it can throw you. But what I'm here to say, and one of the messages for this podcast, is we love who we love. And if we fall in love with someone, we should feel incredibly fortunate to have someone in our life who we can share our life with. And yes, most of us would not say, I am looking for someone significantly older or significantly younger than I am, especially an entire generation or two. Now, we're not talking about things like arranged marriages here, but men and women who consent to be in a relationship with someone quite a bit younger or older. 
So we're going to look at some of those stereotypes and the reality and what that looks like of having a relationship with that kind of age difference. And the age difference that I'm going to talk about is more if we're talking about at least 10 years, not just a couple of years. Now, if we think about this, and depending on the decade that you were born in, it could be quite a difference. I think now there's a little bit more of an understanding of these kinds of things. But people who were born in, let's say, the 1950s, I, for example, was born in 1955, or in the 60s, there was a bit of a coming of age back then. But there also was much more of a stereotype back then and what people might think about if you're walking down the street, holding hands, snuggling, kissing someone 10 or 20 years older than you. Now, the statistics, when I looked at this, the statistics are interesting. Nearly 5% of married couples in the United States, the man typically is 10 to 14 years older than the women. Older men typically represent financial and emotional security for younger women as a way of getting out of their difficult families or getting some independence or having this image of having a dependable long-term partner while the younger women in a scenario like this actually are referred to as gold diggers and taking advantage of the men. And it's all about their money. So when we think about the struggles that couples may have that have an age gap and what should we do about it, there are a couple of common areas that all couples with the age disparity have to contend with. And here's some of them. Probably the most important one is this sense of being judged and that there is a clear bias against age disparity in a relationship. There's a societal problem. There's a standard that people have that basically say that there must be something weird going on about one or both of these people that they would be interested in having a relationship with this huge age difference. It also gets trickier when we talk about planning for a future or planning for retirement, because the likelihood is one of you will still be working when the other one is retiring. And so when we talk about how do you plan for this, that becomes a bit of a challenge, particularly if there are kids involved. Because with the children, it may very well create a problem because how you may be aging as the kids get older and the likelihood is that the children will be experiencing the death of a parent, especially if the two of you do have children. So the important piece of this is that there needs to be an openness and a dialogue about some of these ramifications. And if you're not one to be able to foreshadow some of this, you could create a problem for the two of you that then becomes susceptible to issues around infidelity and issues around insecurity in the relationship. One of the things that actually goes along with the judgment piece is let's imagine something that you meet someone and you fall in love. There's an excitement that comes with that newfound love. And most of us want to share that with everybody. We want to share that with our friends. We want to share that with our family. And we want to share that with our parents. The tricky part is, what if your partner is close to the age of your parents? How do you then deal with some of those ramifications? And when we talk about meeting someone's parents, there usually is some sense of an awkwardness about that 
if you're 10 or 20 years older than your partner, now imagine how awkward that could be. There needs to be a real sense of security in the relationship to handle something like that. The other thing is the whole generation gap that needs to be addressed. You know, I was born in the 50s. My music is the 60s and 70s. My partners, if I am much older than them, are going to be music from the 2000s, heavy metal. That's a very big difference in what we enjoy. And how do you put that together so that the two of you have shared passions and shared experiences that are going to excite both of you when you attend concerts and things like that. That goes along with what do you talk about? The two of you have to be very well-bred on each other's culture. You have to be able to have a dialogue with each other. Intellectual dialogues and passions about politics and passions about the things that matter to you can really become a difficult task if there's a drastic age difference. My daughter, who is 24, and I, who is 62, what we care about, how we go about communicating with our friends is vastly different because of that age difference. So you need to be very careful and know how do you bring those pieces all together? And does the relationship become, and I did a podcast recently on how to be a wife, not a mother, to your partner, but with this age difference, there's a whole lot of risk at the relationship becoming a parental one. And if we're going to love our partners and we be developing a close, connected relationship, we have to find a way to be equals and not parental. So how do we handle this age disparity? And let's get to that. The first way that I'd recommend is that the two of you need to really develop an openness and an acceptance that there are going to be drastic differences between the two of you. You have to accept that one of you may be more emotionally mature if you're the older one in the relationship. Now, that doesn't mean that the younger person isn't going to be able to be emotionally mature, but the likelihood is that there is going to be more of a sense that the older person has more knowledge and wherewithal and maturity, although I would suggest to you sometimes that's far from true. Okay? Age alone is never a barometer of maturity, in my opinion. The second suggestion is you need to focus on mutual interests. You need to find those things that both of you enjoy. The arts, for example, theater and dance and political party are all things that quite often have commonalities regardless of age. So you want to spend time doing the things that you have in common. You also want to meet each other's friends. Now, that's where the judgment may come into play. Particularly, I think, and more so, I believe, this is my own bias, the younger people are going to have a more difficult time than the older crowd with this. There may be sneers and jeers. There may be thoughts of, boy, you lucky dog, you. But there won't be the judgment that the younger crowd might have that you're a gold digger and that you're only with this person for personal gain. But meeting each other's friends is critical and sharing those experiences and doing those things as a couple. 
You also need to be open about the expectations in a relationship. And this is where communication is absolutely critical. And you need to be aware of your partner's expectations from this relationship. That includes things that have to do with finances, health care, and retirement. And you have to talk about all of this. One of the big issues, obviously, is what about bringing a child into the mix? Is that part of the agreement that you two will have that if you have a relationship that children are wanted and you may be with someone that's already raised a child, are they going to want to be a mother or father again after they've just gone through it and now are empty nested? Is adoption an option? Because biologically, it might not be possible. I'm not saying that this should get in the way. What I'm saying is you have to have the dialogue. There has to be a discussion. You also have to deal with the fact that there's going to be more uncertainty about the future. How long will you be together? If you're in an age disparity relationship of 10, 20, or more years, one of you is bearing the other. And are you prepared for that? Are you prepared to have this deep emotional relationship that may not last that long? Because if you marry someone in the 50s or 60s and you're in your 20s, by the time you're 40, there's a very good possibility that someone's going to pass away And if not pass away, will be frail and elderly and not able to do the things that they now can do. Those things need to be discussed. The biggest issue, however, and this is the one that sometimes gets people in trouble, is you don't want to attribute everything to age. Problems that may come up, triggers that may come up. It's like any other relationship. That's going to happen. Don't attribute the problems to your age and don't let family and friends tell you that's why you're having a struggle. And so often that bias gets in the way. I believe very much, as I started the podcast with, love is love. And what we want more than anything is to have a loving, caring relationship with another human being that has your back and you should love having that relationship every day of the relationship. Thank you for joining me. I love having you guys attend every week. Please get hold of me at Stuart at the couples experts.com for any opinions, reviews, or any suggestions of content that you would like me to talk about on the podcast. And don't forget about signing up for my Stuart's daily notes. It's a free subscription email that you can sign up on the website, which is www.thecouplesexperts.com, where you'll get a email video from me every single day, five days a week, take you about two minutes a day to do, to really have you focus on the right things to help the two of you have the best relationship out there. Take care, and above all, stay connected. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. This episode has ended, but your journey continues. Head over to www.thecouplesexperts.com to access all the links and resources mentioned in this episode, as well as bonus content exclusive to podcast listeners. Enjoyed this episode? Why not hit subscribe now and never miss an episode? 